Like if you could have sex, you could talk about checks. Like okay. let's start thinking about that. <laughs> that. But the, the golden rule, like the master rules, if you're going to move in together, these are eight numbers you got to sit down and talk about. Welcome back. Huge day. April 1st. Best Everything day we're announcing today is not an April Fool's joke, so get excited. <laughs> Tour, cock ring, all the things. Oh my God. Last day in the studio at Spotify, and then we're going home, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Spotify's been great, but I miss walking five feet into my garage yeah, to just record. Just hold on, we're going home. <laughs> just hold on, we're going home. Look, and then I'm so close, eight minutes away. Uh, Tessa is too. Oh, what a dream. dream. Love it. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. About okay, today. let's just get the partners out of the way and then we're going to get right into our announcements. We're so hurry, excited. Hurry, hurry. Thanks. <laughs> You know, I have a speech impediment and half of my face is paralyzed. <laughs> it's getting a little less paralyzed, which I'm upset about. It is? I liked your crooked face. I bo- <laughs> It's still kind of crooked. My smile really there hard. There is the song called Crooked Smile. You know this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's your theme song. Okay. Thanks to AG1 for supporting GGE. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash GGE. Thanks to Buffy for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Buffy makes award-winning bedding that's soft on you and soft on the earth. For $20 off your Buffy order, visit Buffy.co and enter promo code GGE. And thanks to Clarence for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Clarence Multi-Active Cream provides 24-hour hydration and a smooth, refined complexion with a healthy-looking glow. Go to Clarence.com slash GGE and enter code GGE to get Multi-Active Day and Night Cream for 10% off, a free welcome gift, plus free shipping on your first order. I'm so hyped. I'm going to run through this wall in my Janko jeans today. <laughs> Oh my god we are both wearing like these are so baggy cargos. i was like is this gonna be okay i have never been more in my like 90s era with all the music i'm listening to like recently i've been listening to a lot of third eye blind <laughs> and i was like i wonder if they're touring so i just go look them up why are they touring with yellow card you love yellow card i love yellow card it's the soundtrack of college for they're me. doing like a summer tour i'm like i have to go i don't know why they're together all I listened to in my Chevy Cavalier in Indiana in college, I drove around crying, listening to Yellow Card, yell, screaming and crying in my car. Oh, my God. Why is Third Eye Blind on tour with them? Why not? They don't seem to, like, mesh up together. They to don't? Me. I don't know. They're same genre. Are they? Same same era, same genre. I'll go see them together. I just, I didn't, like, link the two. I think, oh. I think like, Yellow Card with, like, My Chemical Romance. Oof. Say less. <laughs> that would be amazing. That's what I used to listen to. I used to doing, like, Scream Cry. Scream Cry? But... I really love Third Eye Blind. Like when I really listen back to all the songs, I'm like, I'm so amped about this. At the Greek Theater in LA, I've never been. We're doing a Bang Bang, I hope. We're doing one night. Well, Bang Bang's the same night. We're doing Third Eye Blind one night, Noah Khan the next night. But also now Megan The Stallion is the same night as Noah Khan. So listen, if we can't get Noah Khan tickets, I'm going to be pushing for Megan. I'll, I'll go. But I like outdoor concerts in the summer. That's like the vibe. You know what I mean? I like it. I don't really want to go see her at Crypto.com Arena in June. Well, Noah I Khan would, is but... at MSG. And so I was going to maybe I do New York Brooklyn or Bowl. LA. No, MSG in New York or Brooklyn Bowl Brooklyn in LA. Bowl, so which is outside. I'm doing LA, yeah. Okay. Speaking of being on tour. Speaking of being on tour, oh my God, we are announcing the fall and winter tour, the No Crumbs Tour, because you know we're going to eat. The girls, they got to eat. They are not leaving any crumbs. The No Crumbs Tour is going to kick off in September, go through the end of the year. We are so excited. I'm going to cry. I'm so excited for you guys to just see the tour poster and the hype video, and then of course come to the shows. There is no show like a girl's got to eat show. There is no more fun no wild night out. You never know what's going to happen because we never know what's going to happen. Ever. Crazy stuff happens at our shows. People meet. They go on dates. They have threesomes. They make new girlfriends. They, they get stripped on. They, they see my stri- boobs. <laughs> yes, they see tits. <laughs> they get t-shirts with the t-shirt cannons. Like They see <laughs> drippers and drum lines and all the things. Our shows are epic. If you are new around here, you have to come to one. We have been touring since 2018 and they have just gotten progressively better and wilder every single year and we can't wait we've never taken a break this long so i'm gonna be even crazier and more amped i feel like i have something to live for again i woke up with pep in my step today i'm so of course i live for all you guys and vibes and all the people in my life i don't care whatever you get it i am so excited to be back on tour i am so excited to have an excuse to not go to social plans (laughs) i just never have any excuse to not like do a thing i'm just around all the time just around all the time i also just can't wait to see all of our friends and 
family on the road. Like I kind of forgot. It's like such a time when we get to connect with people all over the country. I know. know. I love it so much. So we're going to announce all of the locations today. They will be on sale next Monday, April 8th at 10 a.m. local time. And then you can get tickets at girlsgottaeat.com. It'll all be on the website. We are kicking the tour off in Las Vegas, baby. Oh, my God. (laughs) Never done a show. There we have a bunch of new markets on this tour. I cannot I fucking wait. Wake up and shake the glitter <laughs> off your clothes. Isn't that right? Vegas, Katy yeah. Perry. Yeah. yeah, that's what we're gonna play that song. We I'm gonna to. dress as a Vegas showgirl. I'm gonna dress as Celine Dion. I've been wondering what you're gonna wear to be her. I was trying to think on an iconic Las Vegas residency. Wouldn't that be one Brittany? of the top? Britney. But people sometimes say I, I give Celine. Listen, but, we have time to think about it. Or maybe just like Thunder Down Under. What I'll be that? a male stripper. You're going to be the blue man group. <laughs> I hate the blue man group. I saw it once. I was like, this is for kids. I hated it so much. No <laughs> offense. You come out. And how much do I have to pay you to do the whole show in blue? <laughs> I'm not doing it. I don't like it. <laughs> Why did that get brought up in the mix? <laughs> I'm like, silly. If I like, forfeit my cut Why? from the show, we do it in blue. <laughs> fine. I'm fine. I will. <laughs> I would. You guys get tickets to Vegas. <laughs> We're going to be at the Cosmo. Uh, on September 21st. So September 21st. assemble the bachelorette parties. Oh, yeah. Birthday parties. We're going to invite every person that we've ever been friends with. Absolutely. And even if you aren't engaged, just have a bachelorette party. Why not? Yeah. Those people are people, too. Yeah. People, <laughs> people who aren't engaged. People aren't engaged. Have feelings, like me. too. They're people, too. <laughs> I'm not engaged. You're closer that than be, I am. It might be that. It might be, it might be my bachelor. <laughs> Ashley's bachelorette party. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, okay. And then a bunch of new stops. So right after that, we're going to my hometown of Pittsburgh. Oh I God. can't wait. My dad's going to bring his girlfriend. Stay next to my mom and her husband. Yeah, I'm and then so your mom's going to do the cum sounds that we talked about For last both week. both of them. Yeah. yeah. And if she doesn't, my, dad, my dad's girlfriend will pick up the slack. Yeah. So September 26th in Pittsburgh. September 27th, Indianapolis. September 28th, Detroit, oh, Michigan. I'm going home, Detroit. <laughs> I can't wait to see you. You know how I We're feel about We're ending the tour there because Ashley just wanted to stay. Yeah, actually, I'm that's, moving there. That's actually I'm, the end of it. On September 28th, we end the tour and I stay in Detroit. So it's actually, the t- technically, it's Royal Oak, Michigan, which is just right outside Detroit. So we're going to do the Royal Oak Music Theater. So just to clarify, but of okay. course, we're staying in Detroit and these are going to be all our Detroit girlies and I guess our Royal, our Royal Oak, Sorry. Royal, <laughs> wow, Royal Oak girlies. Then Halloween shows, you guys know we love a Halloween show. We're doing Portland, Maine for the first time ever, October 24th. And then we're heading to Philadelphia, October 26th, also a Halloween show. Why did you say Philadelphia again? We don't say that (laughs) word. I hate that it's even on the tour poster, but we can't. We have to like be official. Philly. Yeah, we could. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> I might have I a change. City. Yeah, Philly, PA. Yeah. So those Halloween shows are insane. Last year it was just the most fun, incredible time. Everybody dressed in costume. We had good different costumes every night. So again, Portland, Maine, and then Philly. Matt Hasseltine will be there. Matt and Steph, of course, and like my family will be in Philly. I had told Matt to save the date, and uh, of course he had it on his calendar. And then he texted me yesterday. He said, "I just had a friend tell me is his wedding is going to be on that night." Got to move the wedding. I said, who? He said, some guy's name. I said, never heard of him. He goes, that's fair. I'll be at the show. <laughs> who? I don't know him. If I don't know him, he's not important enough. I'm I, sure he's great. I, Congrats to him and his future wife. Yeah. But no. The Philly show always lands on someone's wedding. And you can't go. It was on Francis Ellis's wedding. We couldn't go to his wedding because oh, we had yeah. a Philly show. Right. So anyway, guys, Philly, that's going to be back at the Miller Theater. That was my favorite show of last year. Oh, yeah. 2023. You want to do the rest? Okay. November 14th, Denver. We love Denver. Love it so much. And then November 15th, Minneapolis. Ugh, Minneapolis and Detroit. I can't wait to see It's that. the best run. It's my favorite. Yes. And then November 16th, New City, Madison, Wisconsin. We've been really wanting to go there. We've really wanted to go there. We did Milwaukee, which is kind of close last year. Mm-hmm. So if you're from Milwaukee, drive the hour. Come. Oh, 100%. percent that's a Saturday night. Mm-hmm. So make a day trip, night trip out of it. December 14th, New York City. Baby. Times Square. Yeah, switch up the venues here. We're going to be at the Palladium in Times Square. Maybe we'll get a billboard again. Oh my gosh, should we? We should get a billboard. Somebody should give us a billboard. Girls Gotta Eat No Crumbs Tour Times Square. Okay. Okay. That's, and then that's where we're manifesting. We're ending the year. Are you guys even ready for we're doing a holiday? We've never done a holiday show here before. Boston, <laughs> baby. Come back to the Wilbur Theater. Ah! 
ending the tour, our favorite, listen, we love New York, but our favorite theater, the Wilbur in Boston. Yeah, we had to do the Wilbur. And we, we did the Wang last time and we loved it. We were like, we're just going to go back to our roots. So of course, we had to book two nights. So the 20th and the 21st, that's your Friday and Saturday night, right before Christmas, holiday shows in Boston. I absolutely cannot wait. Uh, you know, like this is the one we had to we had to work around someone else's schedule. We had to work around the special guest and of the he night. You better make it worth it. <laughs> he will make it worth it. <laughs> Sparkle Eyes will be there both nights. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. It's probably some of his family and friends will have his if he's still single, but we will have his tall, good looking single guy friend. Well, I still haven't met yet. I'm tall excited. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Tall enough. Well, because everyone's you know, tall for me. Well, he's tall for Boston. He's enormous for Boston. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's basically Shaq in Boston <laughs> at six feet. So that's the tour, you guys. And we are talking about some shows going into early 2025. If you feel like, oh my God, they always come here and I didn't hear my city. We're talking about going to another country that we haven't been to in four years. Yep. So, Valentine's yeah. Day shows, Valentine's, all kinds of fun yeah. stuff. So we can't wait. We're really packing it in, in these three months. It's going to be so much fun. Tickets go on sale next Monday, April 8th. Girlsgotteat.com. And it'll be on our website if you're like I'd want to know the times the dates all that we'll get venues, that up so you yeah. just have it to the yeah. venues we can't wait to see you guys we can't wait we're doing new things we have stuff obviously already in the works and it's just we're just going to keep getting bigger and better which is like I don't know quite how every year I'm like what are we going to do you'll we'll think of it yeah, yeah it's like that's, that's on me <laughs> <laughs> and Tessa I'm like what are we going to do Ashley and Tessa will deal with it <laughs> yeah Raina literally just shows up she's like what are we doing here today guys what are those t-shirt guns what are these cannons like it's sometimes just... I don't even ask who the entertainment is. I'm just like, I'll find out when the show starts. <laughs> I deeply care and I'm deeply appreciative of everything you guys do. I think it's fun do. you get to be surprised about some stuff. <laughs> You've just always been in charge of it. I gonna do? Hey, Ashley, I know you've been doing this for five years. I know you got lock on it. Maybe I'll take over right no, now. No, no. No. Okay, so that's the tour. You guys, we are so excited. No crumbs will be left. Girls Gotta Eat. Girlsgottaeat.com. I can't wait. I'm very, very excited. Okay, we're just going to take a quick break and then we will get back into it. I'm telling you guys about Clarins. I did my Clarins night cream last night, my day cream today. And if you are like us, you're a millennial, which means it's time to add Clarins multi-active cream into your daily routine. So if you were listening to Third Eye Blind <laughs> or Yellow Card or My Chemical Romance in your car, driving around, map quest directions out... You know, it's time for Clarence. No power windows. <laughs> no. It's time for Clarence. <laughs> So we really love this and we love that this brand is a partner of ours. I used to use it so much and then I really brought it back into my routine. I'm so happy to be using this. I mean, so many things can cause aging, whether it's lack of sleep or hydration, even just stress aging is a thing. But the good news is Europe's number one skincare line has a solution you can trust. This is so true. Whenever you go to Europe and you're like in those pharmacies, you see it uh -huh. a lot. Beautiful packaging, really simple and clean and classy. Rooted in nature and innovated with science, Clarence has a long legacy of creating industry-first plant-forward products. They use a skin charger complex made of 2% niacinamide and sea holly bioextract. So the multi-active cream is what we're focusing on. Obviously, they have a full line of everything you could ever want for your skincare, but really that's where to start. It's been clinically proven to target the first visible signs of aging by smoothing lines and wrinkles, refining pores, evening tone and texture, and strengthening the skin's moisture barrier. So you guys can try it now. Again, that's Clarins Multi-Active Cream available online now. And again, I've been using it. I can really feel the difference. It just goes on so silky smooth and really makes your skin look radiant and gives you that 24-hour hydration. So go to Clarins.com slash GGE and get multi-active day and night cream for 10% off, a free welcome gift plus free shipping on your first order. That's C-L-A-R-I-N-S dot com slash GGE with promo code GGE. Clarins.com slash GGE with promo code GGE. Yes. And something I have incorporated into my daily routine literally since they became a partner is a scoop of AG1 every single day in my water. I feel great. I know I'm doing something good for my body and it is the only sustainable thing I've found for me that I can incorporate a multivitamin into my routine every single day and it tastes really good. I always drink AG1 right after my workouts. I put a scoop into some cold water. I like the flavor and it is, again, just an easy way to have a multivitamin, stressed adaptogens, prebiotics, probiotics, antioxidants, <laughs> superfoods, all kinds of things that are great for you all in one little scoop. And it's essential brain, gut, and immune health support. I know I'm covering my nutrition bases right from the start of the day. 
I swear I just feel healthier. I feel more alert. Mm -hmm. It just helps with so many different things. Yeah. And you just went through this like surgery where it's so important to keep your immune system strong and totally. stay on top of all that stuff. So anything that you may be going through or not just it helps keep you tip top shape. Yes. Tastes great. And then we love the travel packs as well. Ashley and I just tossed them into mm -hmm. our to goes on the road. So if there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why we've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash GGE. That's drinkag1.com slash GGE. Check it out. Okay. So we did our Am I the Asshole episode with mm -hmm. Morgan last week. And we got so many. And I just want to start incorporating some of them into the episodes because they're so funny and they're such good conversation topics but this one just was funny and i don't know if you read this one because i'd like started in her email and i just wanted to read it and see what you thought okay. okay so again this was a submission from our topic we did last week hey ladies i recently gave my fiance access to our wedding registry because again they were so much of our engagement related right he added four bidets <laughs> one of which is six hundred dollars i checked with him to ensure this was an accident only to find out it wasn't that's so funny she's like clearly it was an accident you did the quantity wrong right Am I the bad guy if I delete at least two of these from our registry? Our guests will for sure think we have gastrointestinal problems. Did I miss the part where she says how many bathrooms are in their house? They must have four. Four bathrooms. That's... They're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, that's such a man thing. Like my brother, they have one. They have like a tushy on their toilet. And like he was like, we want one on every bath. Because once you... Well, you never know where you're going to go. go. Back. Yeah. And then what? You just have to like use your downstairs half bath and not clean your butt like i do understand where he's coming from but i think it's so funny that the bride was like babe we can't this I'm is just, crazy i've never seen a man get so involved in a registry he's like i'm not gonna put anything on here but i'm gonna get ultra involved in the bidet he part of the registry all he did. <laughs> that is so funny he requested <laughs> access just for this he was like maybe she won't notice did he add anything else like luggage or sheets he's like i just want to clean my butthole in every room in yeah. this house no literally. i need to know how many bathrooms they have i if they don't have four bathrooms i will die that is so he's like what funny. if i break one i want yes. a backup he's like one other time we're gonna get these for free <laughs> Like, this man is thinking properly. He's like, I don't want to buy this for myself. Let's have someone else buy our butt cleaners. But if he has two bathrooms and they get extra, how hard are you going on your that butthole? Do so you think funny. you're going to break a bidet? He wants a backup just in case. <laughs> also, what do you think about, like, so I have a downstairs bathroom, like, in my kitchen. I have one in my bedroom and I have one in the guest room. Do you think you have to put one in the guest room? I haven't used my guest room bathroom in about six weeks and I had a terrifying situation happen to me the other night. I don't use that bathroom, so I wouldn't put right. a bidet Are you in talk it. About this? Of course, I'm gonna talk about it. It makes me sick. It, I told Anne die. yesterday on the beach, and she <laughs> screamed. She did that Britney Furlon. Ew! Like <laughs> with my favorite thing that Britney Furlon does. If you guys listen to This Is the Worst with Britney Schmidt and Britney Furlon, and I recorded with them recently, she does this like. Ew! And it's like makes me laugh every time. It comes from the chest when you're so grossed out. And did that when I told her about this. Yesterday. This is how I, I am so disgusted. I can't believe I'm living like this. So I've had a lot of men staying with me throughout all of January. I finally got all these men out of my house. I don't think not consensually. <laughs> <laughs> they just show up and I have to let them stay there. So I haven't been in the guest bathroom since then. And I normally do clean up between guests, but nobody else was coming. And then I just kind of forgot. And I was like, no one stayed here. I'm not planning on anybody staying here. I've washed the sheets in that room. So I had a girlfriend say to me, can I stay with you for a couple nights? My first female guest. So I, <laughs> she lives in town. <laughs> she lives Anyway, okay. her boyfriend lives down the street from me and her place is up the street, but she needed somewhere to stay. Yeah. So I was like, that's fine. So I decided to like be nice. I got her some flowers and put it in the bedroom and I was like, I'll clean the guest bathroom for her just in case. Yeah. I lifted the lid. Actually, there was poop galore. There was like old toilet paper, like Rina, sticking stop. to covering her ears. <laughs> We need a camera on Tessa. She has a full, like, she has her ha arms over here. She's, like, going, like, stop. stop. The old toilet paper was, like, brown okay, and right, clinging let's, let's to the sides the of the detail. toilet. Okay, well, I had to deal with it. Okay. So I was like, I don't know what to do. I guess I have to plunge this toilet. 
And I was like, maybe he just didn't flush it when he left. And for some reason, it's still clinging to the sides for dear life. I flushed it. Actually, it came so close no! to the top. I was like, if, oh! if one drop overflows, I'm moving out of my house. You have to leave. This is my dream house, and I will leave it today. No, I will set a fire and leave. Leave and never come back. I will never go a match back. Like Angela Bassett and waiting to exhale. You walk away. And you're like, that's how. <laughs> I, I don't care. The roof is leaking. The refrigerator doesn't work. And our studio flooded. If there is poop on the floor from a man I will move out yes. of the house men's shit on your floor you Six can't stay shit. there yeah. stop <laughs> it's aged not the aged shit. aged poop so I I'm like really not drinking right now because the surgery and it makes me very inflamed and uncomfortable but I was like I can't go I can't go it sober so yeah. I also like didn't know where to get a plunger in the middle of the night it was like from the middle of 8 30 so <laughs> In New York, I would, just try, I would just go to the bodega. But, like, I was like, where do you get a plunger right now? So a friend yeah. of mine told me to go to the grocery store. So I did. I went up the street, got it. And then I drank, like, half a bottle of wine. I made her, like, come into the bathroom with me for moral support. And I – you know when you push down and you're like, if one drop comes up and out of that toilet uh, and touches my body, I will – I'll end it. I'll end things. I am, like, so annoyed at him. What the fuck are you doing? I don't understand Letting it. toilets clog and just leaving. I've Actually, I've lived there for over a year and nothing. I've never had a clog in the house. I don't even know how that happened. Yeah. He had to know. Yeah. I'm so mad. You don't own a plunger. I don't own a plunger. I don't know. I guess I've dealt with some things in my life where I've, like, clogged a toilet or two where I'm, like, I always got to have one. Like, when I move into a new place, I order one immediately or buy one because like what if you know it can be an emergency i feel like when i moved in i bought the cleaners foldable cleaners yeah. i have one next to every toilet i have those about this when i moved in i was like i'm not bringing a, a plunger from new york to la they're so disgusting it's so disgusting. and i just thought like i'll buy one when i need it i live right by the grocery store yeah. and i have never needed it disgusting i don't and also now what do i do with it where do I put it? I know. It's like the there's, Does it there's... live in the guest bathroom now? Yeah. Okay. I'm so this never it. happens again. So no one has an excuse to do this to you. <laughs> you are so victimized. <laughs> he can never set foot in that house Actually, again. This is just another water related trauma that is happening <laughs> in my house. It is nothing but water trauma in this house. Yeah. I, there's really no is. other problems. Yeah. It's literally water world. <laughs> Anyways, this guy sounds like from the bidet. <laughs> My brother, not that he listens regularly, he listens when he thinks he, it's safe, yeah. but he would hear that and be like, damn, missed opportunity to not put three more on our registry. Every man is listening is like, why didn't I do that? Yeah. I just let her get all these serving platters and vases. I think she should leave them. She's not an asshole, by the way. I just think this is like very funny, but like, I don't think people are going to think anything's wrong with them. I think they're going to be like, they are clean. Maybe they're European. I don't think anybody's going to think it's weird. They're I think living dudes European are going to look lifestyle. at it and be like, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> European clean butts. I mean, I could see you having a bidet on every toilet in a house. So, yeah. I mean, I do own one. And then I moved into the house and she has one in the master bedroom. There's one already on there. Sparkle Eyes a bidet, a bidet fan? I don't know if he's ever really gotten down with it. He doesn't like me like touch his butt. So I don't know if he, how he'd feel about a hard stream of water. Up, I don't up know. It. Yeah. I always try to mess around with him and, like, touch his butt. Just you credit card swipe him? Yeah, all the a time. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, in the shower, he, like, I think it's so funny because he knows I'm just going to, like, go for it if we're naked. Like, get in the shower and he clenches. <laughs> we were at this concert one time and I, like, touched his butt. I was like, are you clenching? <laughs> I was like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, you think the guy behind you? Yes. <laughs> He's like, Ashley, my butt is traumatized by what you do to me. He just has such a cute butt. You know, guys have like these cute little butts and I'm always just like, it's one of those things like when you know your partner is like weird about something, you just want to do it. Do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Some guys have the, just the cutest little butts. You can't stop looking at them and touching them. It is cute. Yeah. Okay. All right. So no, I don't think she's the ass. I mean, I think she's like men don't know how to live in a house. Like men don't know how yeah. to exist in a home. So I'm going to help him figure it out. And well, yeah, I want to know if she took him off or not or if they're going to get four bidets for their wedding. Also $600. This guy's fancy taste. Right. How much money do you need to spend on a bidet? <clears throat> to, I mean, tushies are way less than that. Also, I'd be like, just so we're clear, you're going to install all these. Right. I'm not doing this for you. Can you imagine? He's like, we got to call TaskRabbit. It's like, you wanted this. You do it. Yeah. Okay. And speaking of male body parts, the big announcement. Are amazing. The Richard Cockring is back. So the Richard, you can get that dick. It is our toy that sold out in a day. 
I have never seen a cock ring like this. So it's S-shaped. If you've never seen it before, it is in the shot. I'm holding it up. At the bottom of it stimulates the balls. The top of it will stimulate the clit on you. And it is green. It's beautiful. It's soft. It's stretchy, but not too stretchy. Mm -hmm. The hole is an amazing size. Yeah. I mean, it should be one size fits most. Of course, if you have an extremely small or extremely large penis, maybe not. But we really did a lot of R&D on this one to have it really be the best size. And the purpose of the cock ring is, of course, for the wearer, you know, the man with the penis, that it's going to keep them stronger and longer and really help with the blood flow to just have them have a better erection, longer lasting for them. And then for the partner, which would most likely be you and your body part, if you have a clitoris, would be that it stimulates that as well. And it just kind of rests on that and gives you that vibration. So it's working in all areas for this full body sensory experience for both partners. I love it so much. I mean, it is so fun to have sex with. It's again, it's so beautiful and it's so soft. We use the highest quality silicone. And it's just really so wonderful. I mean, we did like a follow-up survey with people who ordered it and we sent it out to everybody who ordered the Richard, who the lucky ones that got it in the one day it was on sale and asked them a bunch of questions about it. And people really gave us their responses and everyone's been super happy about it because something like this, you know, there's a lot going on and you Mm -hmm. want it to fit right and you want it to hit the partner right. And we really feel like we did nail it and we're so happy to have it back in stock and you guys can order it. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's a great price. Yes. It is Bluetooth, so it will connect to our app. You can get it with our Vibes Only Juiced Up Lube. It is the best lube in the game that I have ever used. Ashley and I love it. So you can throw that into your bag as well. We have cum towels on the site that you can add to your purchase. But people have been so happy about this. And it is just a really different, interesting way to have a partnered toy with your partner. Absolutely. So uh, small and petite to throw in your bag. And again, just to reiterate, like Raina says, you really are going to want to have lubrication when you put this on. So get our lube. Or you can grab the gentle gentleman's package, which is going to be the Richard ring, of course, and our cum towel that says strong finish on it and a blow gel. So everything really to have a fun night with your man. And of course, you know, the blow gel is vulva safe as well. So whatever you're doing, you know, that's just a partner pack at that point. Absolutely. We have the vanilla frosting blow gel. We have new flavors coming out for the spring and then for the summer. And we're so excited about everything. You guys can get all of this at vibesonly.com. Yeah. Check it out, guys. We're so excited for you to use it. Get it before it sells out again. Seriously. Okay, and then just going to tell you guys about Buffy, which you can really be getting it on with all your Vibes Only toys on your Buffy sheets. You guys know Buffy makes award-winning bedding that's soft on you and soft on the earth. They use innovative design and earth-friendly materials to make bedding that's softer, safer, and also better for our planet. We're obsessed with it. We have everything Buffy. We have the comforters. I have the cloud comforter and the breeze comforter. I just moved into a new house, and so I'm just kind of like taking inventory of all my Buffy stuff. I have Buffy sheets for the bed in my guest room, a Buffy comforter, duvet covers, the breeze sheet set. I have the soft hemp sheets. I just have it all. I can't get enough of it. And everything is cool, allergenic, and dyed using natural skin safe botanical dyes. Because you are sleeping, this could maybe be on your naked body, it's on your skin. You want it to be like the best thing possible and not irritate your skin. We're just obsessed with it. We actually got this really funny email, and the subject line was Buffy sheets and hot sex. And long story short, the line in this email says, We ended up having spicy sex. And after, as he was crawling into bed under the sheets, he goes, wow, these are the nicest sheets. I feel like I'm living in a luxe hotel. And all I kept thinking to myself was, yes, they're my favorite from GGE. And please don't get cum on all of them. She said, but I quieted that in her voice and said, yes, they're Buffy. The eucalyptus sheets recommended by Girls Gotta Eat. So we love that endorsement. Obviously, we just love everything that they do. They have a free seven night at home trial. So you can experience Buffy before committing to buying it. Shipping is free. We love that. Customers also enjoy 100 night free returns policy. So get those sheets and have your hot, spicy sex and just have a great night's sleep and really upgrade all your bedding and, you know, sleep like us, honestly. So for $20 off your Buffy order, visit Buffy.co and enter GGE. That's Buffy.co, promo code GGE for $20 off. All right, guys, we are so excited to welcome our guest to the show today. He is an entrepreneur, investor, speaker, and Wall Street Journal bestselling author. He is the host of Apple's top charting business podcast, Trading Secrets. And you may know him as an alumni of the Bachelor franchise. His new book, Talk Money to Me, (laughs) The Eight Essential Financial Questions to Discuss with Your Partner, comes out tomorrow. Please welcome to the show, Jason Tardick. Hey, thank you guys for having me. It is an honor to be on this podcast. You guys kill it. We're thrilled to have you. Yeah, this is We're so excited. So this is so funny. We got a DM yesterday from this girl. She lives in Boston. We love our Boston girlies. Saying to have you on. Like she was like, I would love to have a money episode. This Jason Tardick just came out with a book. Like she wrote this whole thing about you. Like we don't know who 
you are. Wow. And then was like, I have a guest <laughs> recommendation. I was like, girl, we're recording them tomorrow. Wow, what's her she, name? Thank you, whoever she, she is. I know. Like, she was like, what? <laughs> she was like, A, she responded. Yeah. And B, they're just, okay. What if it was secretly Evan, like, as this girl, like, hiding, putting in a request? In That's the- so funny. It's your publicist. That's <laughs> yeah, my publicist. No, I I'm actually just like a Finsta. No tro- So people, like, bring up Finsta, and my instant defense is I go right to my Instagram, and I show the people the three accounts I'm logged into. Me, Trading Secrets, and my dog page. No Finsta. No you- Finsta. You want to check it? I DM'd you. That's why you're here. <laughs> yeah. I actually yeah. woke up in the middle of the night in like a fever dream thinking about you. I swear to God this happened. No I Finsta. Love it. No Finsta. Yeah, but in the reason I say this because I'm learning more and more that like a ton of people at Finsta's. Everyone. For what? I like, didn't realize that. Of course that. I do. Okay, what do you do with it? I mean, every ex that I've ever had and yeah. all of their current girlfriends and people I just hate that you I don't like, want them to know. To no, I just I just do it to like see what's going on, but I never check it anymore. I feel that I'm more mentally healthy when I don't look yeah. at that shit. What do you look yeah. at that I for? got logged out of my Finsta when I restarted my phone and I just haven't been back in yeah yeah i dm'd you i woke up in the middle of the night we were thinking like who should we book soon and i woke up and we wanted to like book you for exactly april 1st and i saw on your instagram you were releasing a book on april 2nd and i was like it's meant to be oh my god that is perfect yeah, yeah and when you guys reached out we were like that is awesome so we appreciate <laughs> Yay, it Yay. okay good i love that you obviously you had a career before the bachelor <laughs> but like you've like surpassed that reputation like i don't think of you like that yeah. i don't know if that was your goal but yeah. I, as a compliment like i think of you now as this person who's podcaster and and yeah. gives us great advice and I'd forget sometimes like yeah. do you forget or well, you- <laughs> it, was, it was like I tell this story often but it was this whole thing I got off the show and now I own a talent management company but I'm mm-hmm. very open about like brand deals and how much we make and all this stuff right and Tyler Cameron was on the next show and I got a Colgate deal and then the next season Tyler got a Colgate deal and his you know his followers were more he's taller he's better looking he's more relevant <laughs> and so I said hey, and, I was like <laughs> but what I said was like wait a second we both have teeth we both brush our teeth of course the next guy is going to get paid more or the next girl is going to get paid more so how do I differentiate and I was like okay I need to go back to my roots and so my roots my education and what I did for 10 years and so with that you know if like a turbo tax deal or a capital one deal mm-hmm. comes up they're going to look at your acumen and what your niche is and who your followers are because of that then your rates change so it actually was relatively strategic yeah. to kind of try to differentiate and move away from the franchise a little bit okay so you aren't just like a pretty face you actually yeah. have to, with well, pretty that's teeth. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. You do thank have good you. teeth. Are oh, they real? Thank you. Colgate, no, yeah. They, they saw what they want. I did wanted. a whole episode on these teeth. <laughs> oh, you did? I did composites first. So I did okay. composites right before the show. That's like the cheap version of veneers. Okay. And then they kept cracking and cracking. <gasps> on the show, I bit into a chicken wing. My whole entire wing. Wait, my what? Entire, <laughs> on the show, my entire no. tooth got cut in half. <gasps> So I had to talk out of my mouth all, like for half of it. And you still recorded? It. We still recorded it. Holy shit. And You're a trooper. Because I, I cheaped out with composites, I left myself no choice but to get veneers. So I have eight veneers. They look really natural. I have veneers too. So I'm yeah. not veneer shaming. I have them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm open. Dr. Shaw in Tampa Bay. The guy's a legend. He did Rob Gronkowski's teeth too. What? Got yeah. Gronk's guy? Yeah, Gronk's wow. guy. Wow. Yeah. Gronk's guy. That's, so Rob and I grew up in Buffalo together. And oh, really? he, uh, when, I, when I went through my breakup, he called me. He's like, I think I got something for you. You know, Oh, I'll make you happy. And he introduced me to Dr. Shaw. And Dr. Oh, it was the Shaw teeth? Took care of it the teeth. Put, it, it was a new smile. That is so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Break up it wasn't like teeth. some girl. It was just like yes, teeth. It's teeth. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how you get more girls. I love a good smile on a guy. Okay. I like it. It's, it's so it. good. Even if yeah. it's fake. Yours don't look fake. Yeah, that's the goal. I said, when I went in there, I go, like, yeah. make me look like these are not fake, please. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> them up a little. Yeah. 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 <laughs> make them like a yeah. yellow up a little. A little janky. Like. <laughs> Okay, so tell us the motivation for writing the book. Yeah, so we kind of touched on it a little bit. Like my background, MBA accounting and finance. I was a banker for 10 years, lent a bunch of money, owned businesses. But then I took this detour to go on The Bachelor. So (laughs) when I look at like my life's work, like how proud, it's money and love. Great. Yeah. And so I thought there's a ton of self-help books with money and there's a ton of self-help books with love. But the intersection of both of them, there's not really anything like it. And through research, I learned, and I could rattle off a bunch of statistics, but it's a huge issue in this country is how money is impacting our love and relationships. We know that, you know, it's the second leading cause of divorce behind infidelity, money mm-hmm. arguments. And we know that 50% of couples don't feel comfortable talking about money. And there are so many more statistics that I could bore all your listeners with, but we know it's an issue. And so this book addresses it with eight questions you have to know about your finances, eight questions you should know about your partners and how to talk through them. 
I love the book. I could not put it mm-hmm. down. I was like, Ashley, this is brilliant. We've done a lot of episodes about money and we've had really generous guests. But like, this is the most practical. Like, I could say these questions to my partner and feel like this is a normal, natural conversation. Because I think you hear a lot of advice about how to talk to your partner about finances. It's still like, no one talks like that. Yeah. No one's going to respond well Tell to that. Tell me your net worth. Yes. It's like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> well, and I think that there's so many different reasons. But if you know there's a disparity, it's awkward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially if you're a woman who makes more or there's just a million different reasons there's your shame surrounding whatever you might have going on and there's also then there's this whole like i don't want to know you know like i have a friend that i mean they were married they have kids and stuff came up that after that Mm -hmm. you know five plus years post-marriage post two children where she was like what the fuck you know like how did i miss this Mm -hmm. yeah i'm like i don't know did you ever sit down and ask the question yeah exactly and i'm glad you said the word shame because shame is the biggest issue with money right we know that shame is a toxic trait a lie that tells us we did something bad we know guilt is something you did something bad and you have to fix it Mm -hmm. but with money we constantly feel shame and or if we showcase our cards it's usually met with shame and that becomes the biggest deterrent so when you talk about relationships talk about red flags all the time i'm sure on your podcast is issues, things like that. You could see them, you could speak to them. With finance, it's like you don't even know red flags because everyone just buries red flags. No one talks about them. Mm-hmm. And in relationships and cohabitating in married couples, at least one partner, 43% of the time is committing some act of financial infidelity, which is cheating through your finances, hiding money purchases, things like that, like mm-hmm. material ones. Mm-hmm. And so with transparency, you can totally have an impact on that. And then I, I know you guys like to have fun on this show, so I, I brought some stats for you. But We seven, brought some stuff for you, but okay, it's, it's seven, sex toys. This is a, well, this is a sex stat. I got a sex. <laughs> Okay. 73% of relationships in the study we read say that money is a huge tension in their relationship. Mm-hmm. But of that 73%, more than half said it materially impacts their sex lives. Sure. So the I, resentment yeah. built from money is really impacting intimacy which is a wild concept we don't talk about. It's not a wild concept to me, though. I think if I don't feel respected or I don't respect you and this is this problem that I think would have solved itself and it certainly has not, it impacts my desire for you. Of course it impacts your intimacy. Your respect, your desire, all that. My respect. Like, I've definitely been in that situation where I've just been like, I don't think I respect this person and you're digging inside of yourself being like, well, why? It can't be money. Am I so rotten that this stuff really bothers me that much? But like, of course it affects your intimacy. Yeah. Especially a lot of women want to feel like taken care of financially Mm -hmm. and secure. So it absolutely is a direct correlation to the bedroom. So that's a feeling that a lot of women want, was what you said. So the question is like, how would they know that they are secure? Because the problem is so many people gaslight through their finances. Mm -hmm. So they feel secure because maybe they see that that individual has a nice house or drives a nice car or wears Mm -hmm. fancy jewelry or whatever it might be. But so many people now are manipulating and gaslighting through the show of what is as opposed to what actually is. Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel like these conversations could be huge. And there are so many examples examples of the fraud that happened. So there was one person I interviewed in this book. She went by Jane Doe, but Jane got married to this guy quickly after a year. She made less than him, but her credit was great. He said his credit was bad. So she took out the mortgage and then he said, half the cost, I'll Venmo to you. So her name's on the mortgage. On the deed, both of their names are on it. He's going to Venmo because his credit is bad. That's all she knows. They close on the property. The day they close, she gets IRS letters. The IRS owns her house (gasps) because he had back taxes he did not tell her about. And obviously that led to a divorce. And now her and her new husband had to spend over $100,000 to pay off his taxes because of his Uh, fraudulent activity. Oh, my God. It was extremely intentional. And this stuff is happening nonstop. When I went on my Instagram. I wanted to ask you what you're saying. I was like, please tell me Mm -hmm. if you know anyone that's had financial fraud through a loved one or in a relationship. I've never had more responses. Over a thousand emails uh-huh. we got on this. Oh and my these God. stories were just mind blowing. It happens every day and like we have to protect ourselves. Do you see that like in these situations where like one person has way more money, the person with less is like, I feel insecure about asking. They clearly do have more money. I'm not in a place to like press this person. So I'm just gonna trust. And that's how Teresa Judas went to jail. Yeah, exactly. That's is we had Savannah Chrisley on, and so of course mm-hmm. Savannah defended her parents, you know, to a very, very strong level on the podcast. But her parents are are sentenced right now for twelve and eight years, and I didn't rip through the court documents for anyone that's asking. But her stance is that they gave immunity to the, the business partner. He knew everything. Yeah. Her parents never signed one document. They never had any proof that they're involved, other than him saying on the stand they knew about it, mm-hmm. and so. 
the point is like, if you're not doing your due diligence, if you're not crossing your T's and dotting your I's, you could be in this position. It's crazy. I mean, you hear a horror story after horror story. Oh. It's so crazy. I mean, I can't believe people don't get prenups. I can't believe people just perceive it as just like, unromantic it's like all it is is just signing something to protect yourself in the future like i had a crazy story with a family member of mine like you can't ignore it it feels a little naive to just pretend that it doesn't exist and that it couldn't happen to you yeah the best response ever to anyone who says like oh no prenups i'm totally out on prenups it's to stop and pause and anyone listening here you have a prenup if you're married you have a prenup the question is what is that <laughs> well your prenup is your state laws right, right? right. every mm -hmm. state has different laws and they're i mean florida's is night and day from new york's which is night and day from california's yeah. and tennessee's they're all different so the question is do you want to take the law that's in place it's a cookie cutter law or do you want to say hey why don't we talk about this and customize it to us? Why don't we make it make sense for us? And so that's the the take I have on it. I love that framing. Yeah. You have one. It's your you state's one. decision yeah. and they are so wildly different. Yeah. I just have a really quick question. Yeah. If you get married in California and then you move to Texas and mm -hmm. you get divorced, is your divorce under I think it's where the marriage like, like I'm not a, I'm the, not like a yeah, attorney I'm but just I, curious. Uh -huh. I do believe it's where the actual license took place like where you actually got married and where we license Right that is. makes sense. Unless I think some states have like a time period if you've been there for x mm -hmm. amount of years it would supersede it. But to this point, you can also get something called postnup, which is an agreement you could put in place after a marriage, which is really important to talk through these things, especially when you think about like a caretaker at home who's maybe sacrificing their career to bring yeah, value, absolutely. but then all of a sudden it's over because we know divorce rates 50%. Sorry, mm -hmm. I know it's it's kind of dark and down, but mm -hmm. it's the reality. You need to protect yourself to make sure that if tomorrow ends, like you've given up your career and everything for the family, you're taken care of. I like that you talk about what ifs and contingency plans in the book. We had Laura Wasserman on the show two years ago. She She's a celebrity divorce lawyer. Yeah. And if you guys want to go back and listen to that episode, we talk a lot about prenups with her. And she says the same thing. Why would you let the state decide what's going to happen to you? Yeah. It's so dangerous to me. Yeah. I feel for people who have money problems and lie about it and have a bunch of shame. I mean, it's like a tough world out there. You know, like totally. sometimes I don't understand how people are getting by. You know, I'm not going to get into like <laughs> all of our nation's issues, but like... I get how it spirals and I get how you just dig yourself into a hole you can't get out of and you're hoping for something to happen. And so I really do like everyone that's doing these things isn't like the devil. Yeah. Something has happened in their life to bring them to this place. But if you're going to enter into the life with that person, you have to find out what's going on. Yeah. Well, we all have money. Like everyone has some kind of money issue. Right. Even the richest of the rich, maybe they're weaponizing their money. Like everyone's mm -hmm. got some kind of money issue. Mm -hmm. So I think the idea is like, let's eliminate the whole shame of it. Let's not let like, love be a poker game let's open and be vulnerable and let's just talk about it because you know if you talk about it every statistic says you'll live a healthier happier wealthier life so it's like just just get on the same page have the conversations we're just not having the conversations that's what right. all, the, all the statistics say we're just mm -hmm. not having the conversation so i want to talk about how to have the conversation and then i do want to circle back to you talk about like tells in the conversations that somebody's like lying or trying yeah. to cheat you a little bit but maybe for like just the healthier beginning stages like yeah. you open the book with this great story about how you like moved in with somebody that they owned a house Mm -hmm. and you didn't own yeah. part of the house and yeah. you guys bought animals together. You didn't yeah. have a living asset contract. And I mean, you can tell your own story, but yeah. um, no, you nailed it. <laughs> you didn't have those conversations and you put yourself in a situation that most people put themselves in. I certainly have. How would you suggest opening up the conversation? And I do want to talk about like your questions because I think they're really fun and easy. The first two chapters, I just kind of point the thumb at myself and be like, listen, I got this banking background. I'm this personal finance right. expert. Like this is all I've done. My grandpa, he was an oral surgeon. And he took all of his money and put it in with a financial advisor. At the time, there wasn't the regulation in place. And he got screwed over by <sighs> this guy. Then to take everything out, the guy charged him a 10% fee. So he lost 10% of his net worth. And he was getting screwed over by this guy. And it's when I was 16 years old, he sat me down. And he, sh he told me this story. And then he brought his computer up and showed me every dollar he had. And that our family had. And he said, this is our life's work. You need to see these numbers. You need to get comfortable with these numbers. Here's your grandma's account. Here's mine. And mm -hmm. this is how we invest it because if we're not transparent issues will happen so i learned this at like 16 and even uh -huh. me i was blinded by this uh -huh. i didn't put us in a position to win it created resentment conversations you know obviously conflict that comes from that it wasn't the leading factor for a breakup but you put ourselves in a bad position so i came up with 10 questions if you're going on a date or you're talking to mom or dad or a loved one you want to practice with <laughs> to have fun with money role play right 
Let's have fun. Let's do it. All right, so I'll ask you. Okay. What is one thing that you spend way too much money on, but unless you're completely broke, you won't stop spending money on? My, I love that question. For me, it's manicures. How much do you spend on manicures? Well, I've always said, like, <laughs> since I have ugly fingers. I have ugly fingers and nail beds. And since I was, like, 14, I've always gotten them. I've, I've always said, if I was, like, the brokest bitch on earth, I'll get <laughs> you're manicures. You're still getting manicures. My manicure pedicure the other day it cost me, like, $140. Oh, if damn. you don't have a lot of money, that's a huge amount of money. When I lived in New York and I was, like, 21, I was yeah. I went up to the Bronx and I would, like, get the yeah, cheapest yeah, yeah. I can find. But that's the thing that like I think I spend money on whether I have money or not. Right. And I and always have. Just in that conversation. It's not a necessity. We could talk like way more about like, so why is it manicure? What else is it that, you know, we could start the conversation. But then I would ask you, okay, you win a million bucks today, okay? A million bucks. This is fun. This is great. You have to spend every single penny. Like, what are you going to get? What are you going to buy? A home. Okay, which, where? Probably buy a home in Delaware where I'm from. I've been looking for a home there for a long time, like in Dewey Beach. I'm already like on that track, but so I guess that's kind of a boring answer. No, but... I don't think so. And like when you see a home, like what's the number most important thing to you in a home when you would think about this home? Location, Location, but then the inside the the home. The kitchen, the design. My brother always says you can do anything you want with the right amount of money. Like you can change whatever you want inside the home. But like at a first glance, I'm big on bathrooms. Yeah. I'm a big bathroom slut. Yeah. (laughs) Bathroom and kitchen. Like it's those are a big overhaul to do. Walk in closets. Yeah. I I have like things that are. But just in that question, like I now know Dewey Beach. I know the price point. I know the things Mm -hmm. that matter to you. Like now we can start talking about other things. Like what do you, you know, in like five years, how much do you want to make? Like Mm -hmm. what do you think? Do you want to live in a five million dollar home at one point or is a home not a priority is a travel like mm-hmm. you can have fun with these conversations without being like what's your net worth what's your, what's credit, your credit score, score? yeah what totally do you, know, what you make and it being awkward and weird and that's yeah. what the book's kind of built on okay isn't that so fun yeah, yeah. Uh, i think these are just like easy like how do you like to travel is first class seats important to you what kind of hotel do you want to stay in Something well that like would that. be my answer to the first question yeah I can't, once you hit like a way of travel it's hard to go back yeah it's like that's yeah, what i, I spend so much that. money on yeah. like it took I like kind of was in that place before Raina got there where I was like, I've crossed over. I can't yeah. go back. And she was still, she would like dabble, you know, this Long and that. Flights, and then she was, like, I'll sit in the she was yeah. like, it's so expensive. And I was like, I have stopped caring. Like, this is what I'm spending my money on. Yeah, like, I made a decision, yeah. you know. Right there is why conversations are so important because you have these preferences. You prioritize things. It's going to be way different than what I prioritize. Mm-hmm. And your significant other might not at all prioritize that. Right. But like, you need to verbalize, hey, this is going to be my priority. This is where I'll compromise. This is where I won't. Yours is going to be different than his and mine and yours. And so that's why the conversations like have to happen. Totally. And like, I think it's, you know, do you always take a black car when you take an Uber and your partner's like, I don't give a shit about that. And then you just have to accept that you're going to pay for the black cars. Yeah. But as long as you've had the conversation, I think that's fine. Yeah. As long as you've both acknowledged it. Because I have in the past just expected that these things would just like work themselves out yeah. and the person yeah. will start acting right. And that <laughs> does not ever happen. Assumptions are the worst with money. And I think that like the person who makes less money is just assuming you got this. Yeah. You haven't brought it up. So yeah. why would they bring it up and stop the gravy train? And then what do you like? Obviously, resentment spill because it's like, hey, you're not contributing at all, but you're not even talking about. That. Yeah. Let's do one more. What would you say your biggest, your biggest money red flag is? Like, if you look at everything in your money situation, your earnings, your spending, your debt, your investing, like, what is your biggest red flag? I buy too much clothing that okay, I've so never spending. used. I really, really overspend on clothing. Uh, uh, Ashley comes over sometimes and she's like, do you think you have a problem? Okay, so I got one for you. First of all, overspenders, immediately in America, we put them in a box and say, you are bad. What I say about overspenders, there's some bad with that, but there's also a lot of good. Like you see value in buying and investing in things. You see value in buying and investing in things for you. If you spend a lot, you actually have a high risk tolerance. We know that people that have higher risk tolerances will earn more. So like there's cool things about spenders too. The other thing, the motivating factor I'd of young people with spending is think about how much you spend. And in this book, I walk you through it, how much you spend on an annual basis. Let's call it a hundred K on everything. You want to have about 25 times that saved for retirement. So hundred K times 25, 2.5 million. So if you want to retire, go live 30 years, work free. You want to have about 2.5. Now, if you could adjust that spending just a little bit from hundred K a year to 80 K a year, you now only have to have $2 million saved. So Today, when you spend a little bit less and can take that cash flow and put it into investments, you're making a huge impact on like when you could actually hang it up and retire. People are listening to this like, what the fuck? I need $2 million to retire. <laughs> Isn't that like, ter- okay. I mean, that can't be the norm in well, America. I'm glad you asked. I've actually bookmarked it. So this is a retirement <laughs> savings checkpoint plan. Okay. So if you, and it's got guys different listening, you have different ages and household incomes. But if you have a household income of 150K and you're 35, according to this, you should have 330K saved up. 
Okay. Okay. So it gives you an idea based on your household income and age where you should have. Not everyone's got that. Mm -hmm. So then there's another chart in here that will tell you if you're not there, what you need to save today. So if you have 150K and you haven't saved $1 for your retirement, of household income at 35, you need to be putting 21% of your pay towards retirement to catch up. Okay. So it's okay if you didn't start yesterday, yeah, but it's like yeah. you got to know what you got to do today to get going. Okay. okay. Got it. Yeah. As long as your values are aligned with your partner, maybe you're both like, I'll work till I'm 85. I don't care. That's true. I'll run for president. You guys going to do right this age. podcast till you're 85? <laughs> uh, we, we'll do it until people don't want it anymore. That's going to be so fun when we're really old. It's oh, called like Girls Gotta Eat. the stories are going to be nuts. It's still Girls Gotta Eat. Yeah, they're <laughs> yeah. like, ladies. Like, uh, like 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 golden gram. Girls Gotta Eat. Yeah, Golden eat. Girls <laughs> Gotta Eat. That's incredible. No, literally, if I think when we're like in our 70s, this podcast is really going to fuck. It's going to be amazing. Like, I hear nursing homes are nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Like, STDs are rampant. That's what I hear. Like, imagine the stories. <laughs> they get it in. Actually, I want to know, what is your red flag on spending? What do you spend on yours i meant to ask you I yeah mean, what is your here's the thing one? rain and i got to a place where we started making a lot of money yeah prior to that i mean everything bad you know what i mean like credit <laughs> card debt like spending outside my means all through my 20s i mean i was that bitch on the bachelorette that was like overdrafting to try uh, to buy like a pitcher of mojitos yeah. like i was really broke and i was like living barely paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. and it was dark times. I mean, I made a decision to work for myself and take a risk and bet on myself and it paid off. Yeah. But I lived two different lives. And I mean, now this isn't necessarily relatable to everybody, but I feel like it took me a while once we started making money to really start making money on that money. So yeah. I sat on a lot of cash for a while sure. and I had like weird feelings about that. Like I, you know, almost shame about that. I'm like, I know I should be making more. I know this should be in different places doing more for me and I'm not. And so yeah. then you're like, those are two different worlds to live in. One, I used to be this like broke bitch and now I like, <laughs> Have all this money, but I'm like, it's just sitting in a checking account, you know. Okay, I have a couple comments on that. So when you were spending all that money that you were spending back when you didn't have money, now you have money. Do you currently still spend like that or no? There was like transitional years where yeah. I still felt like I was like in this scarcity mindset. But here's the thing. I wasn't going crazy spending. I just didn't have any money. But I wasn't willing to like not go to a bachelorette party or, sure. you know, like I wasn't overspending. I just wasn't making hardly okay. anything, you know, it was okay. like a freelance writer. So I'm not a crazy spender. Yeah. I mean, I think I just like, I like nice things. I spend money on travel. And it's weird to get to a point in your life where you're like, I can buy what I want. Yeah. Where 10 years ago, you really couldn't. You couldn't. But I mean, neither yeah. of us put ourselves in a position where we can't afford it. Like, sure. I've never spent so much that I was terrified. Mm -hmm. Her and I are really smart now. I think we have great people around us. We have good investments. But we're really comfortable traveling and doing all those things. We don't yeah. put ourselves in a position where we have to be uncomfortable. Like, That's I could great. spend more. Good. Definitely. Okay, yeah. so here's why I asked that. And we're going to have you guys on Trading Secrets. And you might be able to tell I can't us wait. how much you guys make. But that is terrifying to me. Yeah. I'm going to be real with you. Well, yeah, because um, you get scared well, about what? Having to pick up the check for other people. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'll never well, get a black card. I would never. But if you just if you just talked about it, if you set the expectation, but like, okay, I make five million a year. I'm just making this up. But like when I go to dinner, just so you know, like we're gonna split the bill. Like if you have the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We're taught to feel shame around money. When we earn a lot and talk about it, it's like braggadocious and arrogant. When we're broke, it's like shameful, I feel like. But here I want to go to this real quick because people back at home could do this exercise. It's something I talk about in the book. Print out two credit card statements. Budgeting is boring. Excel, blah, blah, blah. it's terrible. I hear budgeting, I want to cringe. <laughs> but this is kind of fun. Just go look at your spending and see where you're spending and take a breather. Don't worry about the numbers. Just take a deep breath and ask yourself, why? Why did you spend that? Mm -hmm. Did you get caught into like a marketing trap? Do you fall for the emails and the links that us influencers put up on there? Are you, are <laughs> you spending because you have an insecurity and you're trying to compensate with confidence? Like there are these weird overlaps with behavioral therapy and our financial behaviors. And so weirdly enough, if you take care of some of the behavioral issues you have, it totally impacts how you spend. Most people are like that. When they don't have money and your situation is different, they spend and spend and spend to keep up and go. And then they come into money and they're like, I don't even spend as much as I used right. to because mm -hmm. you've gained so much like confidence and security. It's huh. like you're not chasing it. And yeah. so behavioral based budgeting is something that people don't talk about either. I want to talk about the other, like the real questions because okay. they're part of the book too. Yes. And, yeah. you know, not those fun, like if you had a million dollars, like really yeah. just like <laughs> knowing someone, what they make, their yeah. credit score. I mean, this is tough. Like this sends a chill down people's spine, you it know, does. like especially if you're in a relationship, you're new, you're having fun. There aren't red flags 
flying, you feel good where you guys are spending and what you think each other may make, but you may like move in together soon mm -hmm. or you might hit that next level of your relationship and these conversations need to be had. 100%. So like I have like a dumb saying, but it's like if you can have sex, you can talk about checks. Like okay. let's start thinking about that. <laughs> that. But the, the golden rule, like the master rules, if you're going to move in together, these are eight numbers you got to sit down and talk about. You have to. Huh? And so each chapter is a question. The answer is a number because I always say like especially in 2024, stories shift, context changes, numbers don't lie. They tell the truth. So the first one is your credit score. The second one is understanding annual expenses. The third one is understanding income. Uh, the fourth one is, and this is a big one, it's putting on your paper because it helps you calculate your net worth, but also gives you visibility. Where are all your accounts? You know, just maybe once or twice a year, where are the accounts and what are the balances? Because a lot of people hide accounts or take cash mm -hmm. for things they shouldn't be spending on. Uh, another one is understanding your net worth. Another one is understanding your risk tolerance because you shouldn't be investing until you understand your risk tolerance. Then the other one is what age you want to retire by and then putting a, a plan in place for your investments to make sure you get there. But in there, I give like very one-on-one examples. Like people mm -hmm. get confused, investments, oh my God. And I'm like, you should be confused. It's like walking into a grocery store and on average, each grocery store has 39,500 different items. Mm -hmm. So we're all going to get different items. Like they have different things for us, different ingredients, different price points. That's kind of how investing is. Like there are aren't cookie cutter solutions. So I kind of walk through uh, some examples of what you could do and how you could do it. The average person couldn't answer these questions about themselves, let alone ask another person to answer them. You know, I, I'm with you. They feel very grown up. You yeah. know, I feel like we might have listeners listening. They're like 26, 27. Like, what are you talking about? We're yeah. just both broke bitches. And we're about to move <laughs> in together and try to scrape by. So, and it's like, that could work or it could yeah. just really blow up. It's a quicker conversation. Well, so that's great. I love that. You're right. Because how I <laughs> built this, by the way, when I was an underwriter, the bank would tell me the numbers I had to see from people to determine if we could lend to them. Okay. So that's what these eight numbers are. But in <sighs> them, I go like baby step by my baby step of how to find the numbers okay. and how to calculate. Like it is very very 101. And I use analogies like, all right, guys, we like wine. We don't have to be a sommelier, though. We just have to know that at Oregon, they have good pinots. That's our like analogies mm -hmm. we bring into this. So, and there's QR codes like where if you're an app person, boom, there's an app that'll do it for you. You know, if you want the Excel file, boom, that'll be there for you. So it's very, very, very 101, right? Yeah. But a lot of this stuff is like the system. I'll give you another analogy. It's meant to be complicated. Mm -hmm. They complicate it because when it's complicated, there's more money being made at the top. Yeah, you have to pay people you, who crack the code. <laughs> yeah, if I have a date tonight and I got a toothache, I can't go to my date. I got to go get that fixed. It's instant pay point. Mm -hmm. If I'm cooking and I slice myself, I need stitches. I go to the ER. Finance is not meant to make us go get stitches or go to the doctor. It's, it's really created. So it's a slow drip. The burn is very slow. So we don't feel it enough that we have to do something right now. Why is that? Because the institutions make massive profits when it's a slow, slow drip. Mm -hmm. So everyone has to take ownership of it. Otherwise, you're going to get caught up in the mess. Mm -hmm. I like that you say speak in like hard numbers rather than hypotheticals because I do think it's important to say, and we always talk about this, like how do you think about money? How do you feel about money? How do you see your future? Yeah. What do you value? And those things are important, but they're not a tangible number to me. Yeah, yeah. You can't you lie mean, about that. You can't lie about the number. That's the big thing. Yeah. And then, you know, I also think we get so caught in our day to day that we don't think about like how and what are we doing to plan, right? But if you bring finance stuff to like everyday stuff, it can connect. Like you think about a vacation you have that's a week long. Think about how much shit goes into that. Your flights, your hotels, where did you book your reservations? What are your outfits? All the shit, the planning. When you retire, on average, you're going to be retired for 30 years. That is a 1500 plus week vacation, but none of us plan for it. Think yeah. about what it goes in for one week of planning. A lot. Right. But none of us plan for it. So there are ways to like take the number and then story tell through analogies we do know that wake us up and then get on it. Yeah. I think, I mean, even when we just talk about like vacations in general in relationships, because I think of all the things that like couples do together. You might start newly dating and you're sleeping together. Maybe down the road you'll move in, you'll get engaged, you'll get married, you'll have kids, you'll build a family, whatever. But like the vacations, I think, and Raina has run into this with a ex of hers of like they can build resentment when someone feels like they're paying for everything or is planning everything and i think it's also nice to sit down and have those conversations too especially if someone makes more and like you're figuring out okay i pay for the hotel you pay for the ubers yeah. and the meals yeah. you know like i feel like people think it feels really unsexy and unromantic but what's worse yeah then you are pissed off so true. and then the you're whole not trip? sex and then your relationship yeah. goes to shit like yeah i hate cookie cutter solutions but one idea it might work for you is you figure out what you and your partner are 
they're making, what the percentages of each, right? Someone makes 100 grand, someone makes 200, the other person makes two times, right? And then you create a joint account and then you decide how much you're gonna contribute monthly. And then the person who makes two times puts two times more. So if the one person mm -hmm. puts 100, the other puts 200, and you just use that fund for your activities, your Ubers, your whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Again, that's not the one size fits all, but it is an idea. And the idea is there are things and solutions out there for whatever your situation is. I love the percentage solution. For rent too. I think so. Yeah, I think well, rice, if somebody yeah. making 3X what you're making, yeah. then I think that we should contribute equally percentage wise if we can. 100%. I Absolutely. Think, I think that makes perfect sense. I was like asking people this when we do finance episodes, yeah. like do you have advice for like tone and speed and location of like where to have these what conversations? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it it's totally has to be felt out, but I always say there's two things you got to do. One, always start with the fun conversation. Always go there. Mm. The okay. second thing is, and I do, I mean, I do it every day on the episodes of Trading Secrets. How do I get big celebrities to tell me what they got paid on that deal, that endorsement? I start by telling them something. So, hey, I just did this deal with Aquafina. They paid me a hundred grand for three posts and four podcast ads. But I saw you did that deal with FanDuel. Talk to me. Like, how was that payday? So I think vulnerability creates connection in this space and creates safety. So have fun with the money conversations and then lead with vulnerability. If you think that people feel shame around it, talk about your fuck ups. Be like, my credit score is 600. It sucks, but I also make 500 grand a year. So like right. I'm working on it. You know what I right. mean? Right. 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 Yeah. I like You're, that. This is another crazy story. Like on the credit thing I talk about. So there, my buddy owns a car dealership and I saw the paperwork to verify this happened. He had someone come in in the same week and one person was buying a $150,000 G wagon perfect credit score. The interest rate was like 2%. Uh, another person came in and had a, a credit score less than 600 because mm -hmm. her parents actually were using her as a co-signer and her parents didn't pay back and they screwed her credit. Oh but she had less than 600. She's buying a $21,000 Toyota Corolla. Her interest rate is 28%. Holy shit. And insurance premiums are off the charts because of her lack of credit. Mm -hmm. Her monthly payment for a $21,000 Toyota Corolla was more than the $150,000 G-Wag. That is crazy. Right? And so it's like if we ignore, we don't pay attention or we're yeah. turning a blind, we are just getting, excuse fucked. my language, you're getting yeah. fucked every day. Yeah. And it's like, but but we don't feel that pain. Mm -hmm. We don't feel the toothache or the cut. So that's where like we need to wake up and we're not taught it in our school system. Mm -hmm. All the dumb shit I was taught in kindergarten, middle school, high, even college. Oh my God. I had an MBA and we didn't even learn this stuff. Well, I think right. you also think to ask your partner how much money is in your bank account, what do your investments look like, what do you make, but no one thinks to ask what's your credit score? Yeah, What kind of, of interest course. rates are we gonna get on a house that we buy together? Yeah, and also you know? like, it's not like, what is yours? Like, I'm not gonna get out. It's like, hey, what is yours? How can we make this? Like, what can we do together to help each other out? Cause we're right. gonna save. Okay, another example, you got a, six, a 620 credit score score below versus 760 credit score above. Both have $300,000 homes. Only difference is credit score. Over 30 years, and that's only 300K, 300K, 30 years, the person with 760 is going to pay $110,000 less in interest oh than the person with a 620, oh, right? So this is stuff you just got to gotta pay attention to. Yeah. Okay. So we wanted to talk about purchasing joint assets mm, and that's a good even one. living assets without <laughs> yeah. a contract. And this yeah. came up last week on our episode too, the dog thing. So we don't want to get too <laughs> touchy. We know you, you share pets with yeah, an ex, but I'm happy to we think people that. really go into, I don't know what else. I mean, homes and pets are the two things I guess I can think about. Yeah. I don't know if there's other things I'm missing, but yeah, I think just, just getting the, ahead of the, the stuff. idea of contracts, right? Like I'll step into the pet thing but the idea of contracts are so important there's a story of Haley page do you guys remember Haley page from say yes to the dress yeah she's a wedding dress designer she went big her name's Haley page yeah and her design label was called Haley page well she was moving at a fast pace at a young age and went for her to get her promotion she had to sign a new employee contract in the employee contract the owner said that he owns Haley page he has full ownership of it well she signed it didn't have due diligence on it Five years later, was trying to get a promotion, worked with an attorney to review her employee contract. The attorney goes, hey, do you recognize he owns literally your name? That's we're not insane. we're not talking about like the late. He owns your name. And she panics and says, okay, renegotiation time, take that out. He wouldn't do it. Becomes a blow up. Her Instagram handles were Haley Page. All of her like personal stuff, her, right. her fiance, her mom, her dad. He took ownership of all those, took ownership of the label. 
She could not create wedding dresses anymore, which was her only skill set. What? And she could not use her name publicly. Unreal. She lost her name. She now goes by Cheval. And this case is still ongoing. And fortunately, like she's starting to get some momentum with it. She can't use her name all because of a contract. Now, she started a non-for-profit that helps specifically women that need an attorney and can't afford it mm -hmm. to get an attorney for these lessons. Now, that's the idea of contracts. Like, we got to learn through this mess. But when you purchase joint assets, uh, you know, it's crazy to think like Ramen and Pino are beautiful dogs are assets, but like according to law, they are. Like, you got to have contracts in place for when things happen so you have a plan. You know, we did it and we don't. And so as a result of that, that leaves us up for a lot of risk, mm -hmm. like a lot. Yeah. Uh, a handshake agreement today is tough. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of couples do interpersonal loans in their relationships without contracts. Those are the highest percentage of unpaid loans are interpersonal so couple relationships. What, just like someone lending money? So like lending in couples. Yeah. That's like the yeah. number one. So like I lent my ex right. like five grand. Yeah. It's, you know? it's the yeah, highest likelihood of <laughs> I've not, done all these things <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of not being repaid. Yeah. And you go to legal zoom and for like a hundred bucks, you could have a contract in place. Right. So there's just no excuse for it. Right. You know? Like that's the thing too. I mean, we're getting out of like the relationship territory, which is obviously also fine, but just pay to have someone look at this contract. You yeah. know, I think people are like, I'm sure it's fine. And we used to be more like that. And now it's like, no, everything has to be looked at and redlined. And, you know, luckily, we've never had a situation where something was crazy and someone was trying to take advantage of us like the Haley Page situation but it could save you your own likeness and name your in the end People, you hear it all the time scenario. in the restaurant industry actually by you Chloe I, I knew the story by Chloe lost her name the yeah. restaurant group took it from her Alon Shia lost his name the mm -hmm. restaurant group took it from him so yeah it does happen Oh, um, so I'm curious if this falls in the same bucket so you do talk about this in the book you like moved in with Caitlin, she owned the house, yep. right? Yep. And you didn't necessarily have any rights to the house. I don't know if you even thought to, yeah. but like if other people are in that scenario where like one person owns the home, you move in, you have no rights to it. You're not on like the deed, the mortgage. Like, yeah. do you have advice for people and like what to do there? Because somebody can kick you out of the house, you're homeless. Yeah, for sure. So like, I, yeah, it was totally her house and I moved into it and it should be her house. Like that, she paid for it. I have no right to that. Yeah. But, and let me just make it like extremely clear. When we broke up, like she was extremely cordial with this. Like, hey, take your time getting oh. Out, totally. you're right mm -hmm. but god forbid she wasn't right you're kind of left so totally. having some type of cohabitat agreement that says like hey if we do break up you got to give me 30 days and i'll be out right like having mm -hmm. something that can't be totally leveraged against you and having a plan for everything for the rent is are you someone maybe going to buy equity in the house so you split it are you going to move within a certain time frame all the questions that you're thinking of which we all think about we just tend to avoid i.e me. And so the, the answer is just step into them and get them ironed out because they're hard conversations. But everybody that's having the conversations, we're seeing the relationships are lasting longer and they're building wealth together in a better manner. You well, know? Well, even I guess a lease. I mean, if someone were to come in right now and live with us, mm -hmm. they'd have to pay rent, which by the way, like people have asked that question in my, you know, current relationship, past relationships, whatever. It's like, you're paying the rent now. If someone were to move in with you. Yeah. Yeah. They pay the rent. That's a crazy thing. Like yeah. just floating you. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> that, that lends itself to not. And that, like my current partner would never expect that, but it's just kind of, I've seen that go south. I was in a relationship like that years ago where I was like, he doesn't make that much. I'm trying to help him out. And that's crazy. That breeds so much resentment. Mm -hmm. And there was this school of thought of like, but you're already paying it. It's like, what's they get to live for free? That's insane. It's a power dynamic. I refuse yeah. to that so yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. that's like a crazy but, aside. But, but like, do you know how many people get stuck on a lease because they, they didn't properly do the contract? Like they're in a relationship, they moved together, yeah. boyfriend or girlfriend's out, and then they don't have the contract. So now they're paying 2x when they didn't plan for it. Right. It happens all the time in leases. Right. Yeah. But if someone were to move in now and like Rain and I are renting, would you add them to the lease? I mean, I'm just curious how that works. So they have some right to the house that they're paying rent I think on? you should because like when I lived in New York and I was maybe like 23, 24, I lived with my boyfriend. I was on the lease. He moved in with me yeah. and he cheated on me and I kicked him out and he yeah. was like I live here and I was like prove it yeah, oh. You don't live here. You're, you're, oh, so your you're argument showing is us against what you it. Did. You're like, he should have protected himself. <laughs> yeah, he's stupid. He shouldn't have cheated on me. But I was <laughs> like, you, you fucking leave today. You yeah, get yeah, your stuff, yeah. you you're leave out. today. And you're he out. was like, I live here. And I was like, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> uh, you so, <laughs> I mean, I got him and it would have been smart for him to just add, add himself to the lease. Also, when I broke up with my ex fiance, we were on a lease together. And when we broke up, the landlord took him off the lease. Yeah. Oh, so you can add huh. somebody as much as you can. You can? Yeah. I guess. And you could even create like, I know it gets a little extensive, but if you had someone to the lease, then the liability is split. 
you know, and then also protects you from someone kicking you out. But you can also create like a very small agreement amongst each other. Like, hey, we have this lease and we're both agreeing that we're going to split bills 50-50 or 75-25 right. or whatever it is so that it's set in stone. And then one thing people ask about a lot now is like, should I be leasing or should I be buying? Mm -hmm. And there is something I talk about in the book called the price to rent ratio. And the idea is you take the median rent in your city and you divide it by the median average home price. And you can see how many years of renting it would take to own the property. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So, and if they say, if the number is below 16, like if the price to rent ratio is below 16, it's an indicator you should probably consider buying the house. Okay. So it's a good little tool if you're renting and thinking about buying. Yeah. We're just... It's a we, lot of we, uh, No, it's just, we've talked with Ramit Sethi about like renting versus buying. Yeah, I think yeah, it's like yeah. important because I think... People, He's a big renter. Yeah. He doesn't know big yeah, He's yeah. a big renter. We're big renters. Yeah. I could buy a house today. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. Sometimes like, it's ease of mind. Sometimes like I know what I'm paying. I don't have to deal with it. Well, we also just like, we've moved around a lot. Yeah. You know, there's a, a little bit of a freedom yeah. to it, you know, but then we just like to always tell people, don't get caught up in what you think you should be doing. You know, yeah. I think people are like, I'm falling behind. I don't own a home and whatever. And there's so many other factors. Definitely. I was maybe wondering if we could wrap up with like, okay, so you talk about like the positive ways to talk about this stuff, but you said you interviewed like a CIA agent in the book. Yeah. To yeah. like figure out if somebody's lying to you about like what they make. Ooh, yeah. What are the tells? Okay. So, so he is, his name's Chris Voss. He was the former head of FBI hostage negotiation. <laughs> so he gives all kind of tip. Oh, is guys he single? Stud. Is yeah. he? Well, just like his presence is a totally. stud. That is yeah. so hot. It's like, energy like, on that The guy. way he can like change his tone instantly oh and get God. what he wants. It's crazy. Like when you listen to the podcast. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things Trust that he, no he talked about. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> Especially this guy. He knows what he's doing. Okay, so. So one thing inherently, just like here's some tips and tricks. Inherently, we in the United States, we have learned that saying yes is something we don't want to do. So if I say, do you want to go to sushi tonight? The likelihood is, you're like, well, maybe I'd go. Great. Jason, that <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> your likelihood is like most people would like, that. maybe I could go. Like, like the idea of saying yes is harder. So one thing he talks about is when you're trying to get answers, rephrase your question to get a no and your likelihood of getting what you want out of it is higher. So are you against getting sushi tonight the <laughs> likelihood of you saying no is higher than the likelihood of you saying yes okay. so that was one tip that you can use in any forum another one is when he says that if you are over explaining or you are raising your tone you are officially losing in every which way that who is over explaining that is over talking and that who loses their tone has lost the argument that was a good one another one was if you feel like you are backed into a corner to respond with the person saying it feels like, it seems like, it looks like. So if you're coming at me with an issue, I would respond saying, it feels like, it looks like, it seems like. And what that does is it shows empathy that I'm listening to you. Mm -hmm. And the likelihood is that if I'm listening to you, your guard comes down. Another one with okay. money talk this is a big one. This is a big one. When you're questioning someone, especially a loved one, and you could feel any bit of de deregulation, never start a question with why. If I mm -hmm. immediately come to you, why were you late? You're instantly defensive and when people are in the defense they're not going to respond the way for you to win and earn their trust in an argument huh? so you want to watch out with saying why first don't say why first why is your critic and then so he's love. big on the one he's like really really big on he's extremely big on tone slowing things down or speeding them up like mm -hmm. he thinks tone and inflection is much more important than the actual words you use. Mm -hmm. And so those totally. are some tips that he used while negotiating like hostages to come out of bank robberies and stuff like that. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, Chris Voss. I mean, I think these conversations are a topic that immediately can put someone on the defense. I mean, oh, yeah. so I don't know any other type of conversation that you really have to go into it prepared with your tone, with mm -hmm. the do's and the don'ts. Yeah. Especially if someone does have something to hide or they're not proud of. Yeah. or ashamed of like mm. it's immediately can go south yeah exactly and you think about like the money just that example it's like why did you spend that or what, right. are, you, what are you doing you're instantly defensive but if you use some of his tactics like in a slow tone be like it seems like maybe last week you spent a little too much on that do you want to do you want to talk about it mm -hmm. right like you think yeah. about the difference in yeah. your right. response like yeah i shouldn't have done that do you want to we put a plan together for that like how can i help like those are great it's crazy. tips. Yeah. Just yeah. words, changing yeah. words, just and words, of and tone. The tone. Yeah. words and tone. Words and tone. Nuts.
I love it. Yeah. Well, this book is really, it's fantastic. It comes yeah. out tomorrow. You guys can get it. We're going to have you tell everybody where they can find you. But it is some of the most practical, easy to follow advice I've ever heard about finances and relationships. Thank you. That means yeah. a lot. It's, like it's kind of how I built it. So thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Tell everybody where they can find you, your podcast, the yeah. book, everything. So Instagram, TikTok, all the social media handles. It's just Jason underscore Tartik. And then the podcast is called Trading Secrets Podcast. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you find your podcast. We have an Instagram page. And then the book can be bought at Barnes & Noble, Target, Amazon, all those places. And I hope to have you guys on Trading Secrets yeah, one day. We would love to. I <laughs> this love has been that. great. This has been awesome. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. And you guys know where to find us, girlsgottoeat.com. Tour tickets on sale next week. Save the date for all of the dates we announce. Yeah. Girlsgottoeat.com, Girls Gotta Eat podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I'm Ash Hess. Rain is Raina.Greenberg. Vibesonly.com. Get the cock ring. Vibes only on Instagram. We brought it for you today, Jason. And oh, <laughs> subscribe on Appreciate YouTube. It. Share this episode with a friend. Sit down and talk to your partner about money and we'll see you next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye.